What was your worst hotel stay experience and what made it so terrible? My dad went to a hotel once and checked into a first floor room. He went in the room, put his stuff down, opened the curtains, and a man was hiding there. My dad went excuse me, closed the curtains, got his stuff and left. Went to the front desk to explain that a man was hiding in his room. Turns out the guy had just robbed a place and somehow got into the room with an open window. Excuse me is the alpha response to discovering a man hiding in your curtains. Your dad sounds like a boss. I needed to find a hotel in Dayton. Oh because of my daughter's gymnastics competition. I read online reviews and the travel lodge there got good reviews. The price was good too. So I booked it. I had difficulty finding it because it was dark and their sign wasn't lit. Parking lot was pitch black. Just outside the entrance there were two sketchy guys that looked like they were negotiating a drug deal. Inside the motel lobby was dimly lit with flickering lights. The room was no better. Stained sheets, holes in the bedspread and hair in the shower. The fitness room consisted of a stair stepper that was broken and an old TV on the ground that was also broken. I told the front desk that I wanted to cancel our reservation. She said, I don't blame you. This place is gross. I had an eye interview at Coles and hope they hire me so I can quit this place. There are some real sketchy areas there. One of my clients paid to break his daughter's lease when she went to UD because of the violent crime in her neighborhood. There was apparently a very clearly delineated line separating good from bad and she was one street into the wrong side. Motel 7 in El Pozo had a software problem. Lost track of occupied rooms. Rather than checking. They issued keys to possibly occupied rooms and waited to see if anyone complained. I twice opened my new hotel room door to find other guests in there. Jesus. I'd expect that kind of unprofessional behavior from Motel 6, but never from Motel 7. The bathroom locked from the outside. If you accidentally shut the door all the way, you had to have someone in the room open the door for you when you were done. If you were by yourself, you were sole until someone came back. Or you called the front desk from the bathroom to send someone up. This was pre-mainstream cell phone usage. So you may not have had your phone on you at all times. Needless to say, we got our stay calmed. On a work trip I was put in the most disgusting hotel room. To the point where I didn't feel comfortable and couldn't sleep. A pile of dirt and dust in the corner that I imagine would take years to accumulate. Brown stains on the lampshades. Food under the bed. Water damage in the pictures in picture frames. The whole room smelled moldy. The hairdryer was sticky. TV remote was stick and covered in food. Stuff all over the walls. Hair in the shower. The toilet bowl was stained red. Everything felt gross and grimy. Hot water didn't work in my room. Cold showers anyone. I felt like a walking zombie that work trip. It felt so disgusting I really couldn't sleep. My co-worker in the next room over. His room door didn't fully shut, and he used the latch at the top to close it. The door was still open a couple inches and he put a chair in front of the door, and didn't sleep at all that trip either. Lol, I love the folks that always say stuff about how I get to travel a lot for work like I'm going on vacation all the time. I've had a lot of fun times, but between some of the dumps I've been in and getting run ragged for work, it ain't usually what they are picturing. Getting stuck in an elevator. Money. This may be the worst one in here as that is a phobia of mine. If you had been injured or killed that would be a massive lawsuit for the hotel. Also, the story reminded me of when my best friend got stuck upside down for 3 hours on some ride at Six Flags Astro World when he was like 8. I stayed at a travel lodge a few years back. Went to get into bed and there was a blood stain on the sheet right in the middle of the bed. Pulled the sheet back and there was a huge puddle of it on the mattress. Still wet. Not nice. Drove halfway across Florida and collapsed into bed in an Econo Lodge in Crystal River. Noticed a funky smell coming from around the headboard. I lifted the mattress and found a used condom. After reading the other posts here, I thought for sure you were going to find a dead body. Or at least a pool of blood. Not really a bad experience, but once I stayed in a hotel where the hot and cold water feeds for the room were plumbed the wrong way round. The water in the toilet bowl was boiling hot and kind of steamed your butt when you used it. A butt steamer is a luxury. Williston, North Dakota, in the year 2000. Construction workers showed up at 11pm and began noisily doing work, talking loudly, right outside our room. 
After I complained to the front desk, they got nasty and pounded on the walls of our room. Checked into a casino hotel in Shreveport, la. Put our stuff in the room and then went to the casino. Came back hours later and could not get into our room. Traipsed to the front desk to find out why the card key was not working. Was informed that our room had to be exterminated due to an infestation. When I inquired what type of infestation, I was told that the desk clerk was not allowed to divulge that information. Got hotel manager and he led us back to our room. Let us in and the place was tossed. Furniture overturned. Mattress off of bed. Etc. There was out luggage and belongings pretty much where we left them. Manager then took us to our new room and gave us the key cards for it. I asked how the heck do you check someone into a room then discover it is infested with whatever? He was unable to adequately answer my question. I asked him about what type of extermination chemicals they use because our stuff had been exterminated as well. He again could not comment. Wound up throwing out any consumables. Didn't wear anything from our luggage and checked out early the next morning, never to return again to that hotel. When we got home washed everything in the hottest water available. As an aside, itched for a couple of days afterward but this was probably power of suggestion. Sounds like bed bugs. They wouldn't divulge because they didn't want to read about it in your Yelp review. Went to a historic hotel in Chattanooga. TN. Walked in the room. Blood everywhere. The bathtub. The curtains. The walls. Floor. Lamp. Everywhere. Hotel refused to move us. We moved ourselves to a different hotel that night. Happened over Christmas time in China. Came back to the hotel after dropping my boyfriend off at the airport so was clearly not in the best mood only to find a lot of my belongings moved around the room and items missing. Including my passport. There was food that she moved into the bathroom, my deodorant was in the shower and my shower gel was on the TV cabinet. Things were taken out of my suitcase and other items were put into my suitcase. Jewelry was on the floor etc. Just really random stuff had been moved. I had to go to reception and try to speak Mandarin. I was studying and explain the situation. My passport was the main issue and I managed to get it back but I had gifts from my mum that were thrown out. Turns out the cleaner had taken my passport with the sheets to the laundry room which is crazy as it was actually in a cupboard. No safe available. Checked out two weeks early and got a refund for all the missing items as she admitted to throwing them away but she wouldn't say anything about why she had gone through my things or why she had moved anything. She didn't throw your stuff away. She took it and she would have given your passport to some nefarious people too. A few years ago I was staying at a hotel on the Las Vegas Strip and they had construction going on. Construction related faulty wiring or something kept causing the alarm to go off. False alarm. And periodically a recorded voice would say there was some kind of incident and to stay in your room until otherwise notified. All. Night. Long. Couldn't get any sleep and I had to get up early and work all day. I was dragging. All. Night. Long. All night. Not the worst. But the TV in my room turned on by itself at 4am. There's no way I could have done it myself. I just plugged it out. Thought about it for a few minutes. Then went back to sleep. Went to an MTG tournament in Baltimore. Stayed in a Motel 6 because we couldn't get our crap together and get a room at a decent hotel sooner. The place was about a block from the light rail. Which went right to the convention center. That was about the highest point of the whole trip. Apart from food poisoning and my binder worth a few thousand getting stolen, the room had a decided dip in one corner where I'm sure the floor was rotting away. When it rained, the bathroom started to leak through the light fixture, and our bonehead roommate put all the towels underneath it instead of, I don't know, the garbage can. Which meant we couldn't dry off too well the second day. I know it was more or less our own fault for not acting faster before hotel prices jumped. But the place was a shithole even by Motel 6 standards. I once stayed in a motel where the back third of the room sagged a foot or more. Mine was so bad we left. I was about 6-7 and we got a late start on the 8 hour drive to Orlando. So my parents decided to make a stop at a hotel. Well... We get to the room and everything felt off. They brought in a folding bed for me and the blankets and sheets looked faded from age and disuse. Look in the bathroom and there was four spider webs in the shower and roaches all over the place. Parents checked the main bed and there was bugs and hair under the blanket. We noped out of there in less than 30 minutes and got our money back. 
97 was a wild time apparently. Pre-Yelp. I caught an Uber to my Airbnb, which was a little guest house next to the host's main house in Florida. I guess they were confused about hearing a car pull up but seeing an empty driveway. I was confused because they forgot to put toilet paper in the bathroom. We were both confused when they walked into the guest house to see me butt naked walking across the living room to get some paper napkins from the kitchen. We, of course, both rated each other 5 stroke 5 stars. I paid like $300 a night to stay at a fancy hotel for work in Park City, UT in the summer for a conference. They put me in this room with a kitchen and a living room and so many doors, like 4 closed doors. So I go to open one and it's locked, and the next one is locked, all of them are locked, and then I realize there is no bed, not even a couch bed, just a couch. They literally gave me a room that didn't have a bed, it was the adjoining living room for other hotel rooms. And I checked my reservation and it said I booked a room with a bed. I felt like I was in the twilight zone when I went to the lobby and asked where was my bed at my hotel and they didn't see the problem. It took almost 3 hours to get it sorted while I'm arguing that paying for a hotel is for the bed. I'd think that a bed would be number 1 on the list of things needed for a hotel room. 1. Bed. 2. Locking door. 3. Lights. There's a hotel in the north of England calling itself a castle hotel like that's a genius piece of marketing that is so bad it's almost comically good. It used to host some events I went to, so staying there was more simple but it really was a lottery every time you stayed there. I'll compile a small list of just some of the issues. 1. Sea view room, where the sea could be seen, just over one of the towers if you pressed your face against the window at just the right angle. 2. Twin room with skylight. Skylight turned out to be very thick white plastic and was the only source of light in the room other than a bedside lamp. The skylight also leaked directly onto one of the beds. 3. Triple room. Except the third bed overhung the bathroom door meaning you either propped it shut and had to move the bed every time you wanted to go in or just leave it open the whole time. 4. Bed bugs experienced in various rooms. 5. Breakfast included food I'm fairly certain was formerly on display in a kitchen furnishing store. 6. The area near the bar hadn't had its carpet changed in what seemed like 40 years, so smelt of stale beer regardless of the time of day. 7. To take advantage of the sea views, there were glass, plastic, hallways. As it was plastic and poorly fit it leaked and stunk of mold. It was also freezing in those parts. It's just a bizarre place. It's like stepping back in time to the early 90s in the least positive way possible. At the peak of Comdex's popularity in Las Vegas, I got stuck at the Tropicana. In those days, the infrastructure in Vegas couldn't handle the Comdex influx. My flight landed at midnight, but it took me until 4am to get to the hotel and wait through a 300 person line at the front desk. When I finally collapsed in my bed and entered that hazy almost asleep state, it occurred to me that I was wet. Why should I be wet? I thought hazily. Then my eyes snapped open. I should not be wet. I jumped out of bed and pulled the covers back to see that pee had soaked out of the mattress, and the sheets were soaked and yellow with it. Clearly the maids had realized that the previous guest had pee the bed, as they had placed a towel under the fitted sheet. So, yeah, I had been lying in someone else's pee. BTW this was my second room, as the first room they gave me a key to was occupied by a startled man in his tighty witties. WTF is Comdex. The hotel had mandatory valet parking for guests. Guests couldn't park their own cars in the hotel's garage. Visitors had to use numbered parking spots assigned by the attendant. When dad retrieved his car from valet parking, several things had been stolen, including his golf clubs from the trunk. Even though the hotel maintained that the car had been locked and was secure in their parking garage. Similar thing happened to me once except I was able to sneak in through a hidden entrance and park in a general parking area. Valet attendants surrounded my car and demanded I leave my key with them even though I was technically in the non-valet portion of the parking deck. I came back to my car a few hours later to find it unlocked with the key inside. I was about 4 at the time, so this is mostly based off my siblings stories, even though I remember a few still shots. We were at a hotel with some family friends and their kids, 5 kids total, us included, ages 4-13. Parents put us all in the same room to chill in the evening as they went out to do adult things, 
probably a fancy dinner, was chilling on the bed watching a movie, and then all of a sudden we heard a loud noise, the floor vibrated a bit, and then, I crap you not, hundreds if not thousands of mini spiders started flowering up the walls, in from two of the bottom corners in the room. After a butchered attempt to defend our ground by using marshmallows and ice cubes as projectiles, we huddled up in the bathroom where we had the bottom of the door sealed with a towel. I slept in the bathtub with my sister that night. There were no phones to call for help. This was before kids teens ever had cells, and we were very clearly instructed to not leave the room under any circumstances. We took those instructions a bit too seriously. My parents discovered the crime scene in the middle of the night, and probably woke up the whole floor with their initial scream. We all ended up okay though. This reminds me of a motel we stopped at in Florida when we were kids. My parents ordered pizza and when they opened the door for the delivery guy a stampede of tree frogs came hopping in the room. I remember my sister and I standing on the bed screaming as my dad was bailing out what seemed like hundreds of frogs. Stayed at a holiday inn in Toronto and the rooms around us were doing something, a party, or dealing drugs or something but a lot of noise, a lot of people coming and going and a lot of people slamming doors. We called front desk a dozen times and they didn't do anything. Kick them out, move them to another floor, something. I shouldn't leave a hotel wishing I had just driven home instead. Incredibly frustrating. I have a pretty low bar for hotels. I want a comfy bed and some quiet so I can sleep. That's it. Don't care that much about Wi-Fi, TV, fancy amenities etc. I'm just here for a good night's sleep. And I don't think we went longer than 30 minutes with a wall shaking door slam. Same. I travel a lot for work and will tolerate some minor stuff. For a work travel hotel though, providing a decent sleeping environment sort of falls into you had one job territory. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. Like and subscribe you magnificent person.